Welcome to the first World War I screencast. We will be talking about the context of World War I, going over a timeline of Europe for about the 75 years before World War I started. Your goal for the screencast is at the end of it, you should be able to explain the context of World War I. As you go along, please take notes on page 6. That map on the top of page 6, there will be a map at the end of this screencast that you should use to fill in the alliances on the map on page 6 so that you are clear as to who is on which side as the war begins. So, without further ado, let's do this. We'll start in 1839 with the Treaty of London. In the Treaty of London, Britain and other European nations guaranteed Belgium's neutrality. This will become a very important point very early on in World War I. I don't want to spoil it, but uh, if you look at a map of Europe, you can probably figure out which two countries might be involved in violating the neutrality of Belgium. Also, during this time period, you had the formation of countries out of these kind of separate kingdoms that were existing in Europe before then. In 1860, Italy becomes a country. Austria and Hungary unify soon after that to become one the country of Austria-Hungary. Germany unifies and becomes a country and immediately goes to war with France and seizes a portion of French territory called Alsace-Lorraine. Um, this will again be an important piece of land later in the war. Alliances begin to form. Uh, soon after Germany takes over land from France, Germany and Hungary form a dual alliance, and Italy joins that alliance three years later to form what's called the Triple Alliance. This was a defensive alliance, which meant that if Germany or Italy or Austria-Hungary was attacked, the other two countries pledged to come to their aid. So it wasn't a, if Germany invades somebody, we've got their back, but if Germany gets invaded, we have their back. In 1890, this gentleman, Kaiser Wilhelm II, the leader of Germany, decides not to be friends with Russia. Now, you might say, well, that's not really that big a deal. Hold on. If you look at where Germany is on the map, this area right here, they already have an angry France here because they've taken some land from them. What are they going to have? On the other side of them, that's not friendly. Hmm. Could be problematic for Germany to be surrounded by people who don't like them very much. 1892. France and Russia become allies. Oh, wait. It's the two countries that are on the eastern and western sides of Germany. Hmm. I wonder where this is going. In 1900, Germany begins to build up its navy to challenge Britain. This was a, a, an early show of militarism. Britain responds and does the same. So you get this military, not a military duel, but this, this building up of national pride and, and also naval power where Britain builds some and Germany builds more and Britain responds in kind, as does Germany. So it's this big, long loop of increasing the amount of military in both countries. In 1905 and in 1911, there is a fight over Morocco, which is on the northern coast of Africa. Both France and Germany want control of Morocco. Again, this is during the era of, era of imperialism. And in both instances, a war, in both instances in 1905 and 1911, a war nearly breaks out between France and Germany over who should be allowed to control Morocco. Very soon after this, Britain, or excuse me, before this, Britain joins France and Russia in their from their earlier dual alliance and forms the Triple Entente in 1892. And Entente just means friendship, so it's this triple friendship. So on one side you've got this Triple Alliance, and on the other side you've got the Triple Entente. And the easy way to remember who is on which side is Entente is a French word, and oh wait, France is in the Triple Entente. There you go. You're welcome. You can thank me later for that tip. In 1908, Austria-Hungary took a piece of the Ottoman Empire called Bosnia, and this made some people within Bosnia relatively unhappy. The capital of Bosnia is a town called Sarajevo, and Sarajevo becomes a very important town as World War I begins. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but Franz Ferdinand, the, a prince from Austria-Hungary, is killed in Sarajevo by a group of Serbs in 1914 
because the Serbs didn't want to be controlled by Austria, Austria-Hungary. They felt like they should be their own country. So this is a an immediate spark that causes World War I, and it happens in this town in what was then Bosnia. In 1912 and 1913, there are the Balkan Wars. Um, the Balkans become known as the powder keg of Europe. We'll talk about that in a little bit later, but this is on the southeastern side of Europe. There are these wars between the countries there, so the tension is building up in southeastern Europe, in addition to the tension that already exists between the Triple Entente and the Triple Alliance, and in addition to the militarism that both Germany and Britain in particular are showing. So... In 1914, in Europe, you've got Germany and Austria-Hungary and Italy on one side. That would be the Triple Alliance. On the other side, in red, you have the Triple Entente with France and England and Russia. And you see an arrow there pointing towards Bosnia and Sarajevo and the powder keg of Europe, which is just on the border of both the Triple Entente and the Triple Alliance. And this is the area out of which a, a small fight coming off of an assassination will mushroom into a world war. You'll also notice on this map that Belgium is in white and is neutral. So that's also something to keep in your mind. So the goal for this screencast is that you should be able to explain the context of World War One. Take a look at page six if you feel like you can do that. Great. If not, head back and rewatch parts of the screencast. Thank you.